Welcome to the program for the first time. Uh, last night's The Titan Games premiered uh, on NBC. and It'll be on Thursday nights at 8 Eastern time, in part starring Dwayne Johnson and the person to my right from ESPN, Carrie Champion. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. So, of course. So, let me just start with this one. Uh, how did you get your start in the television business? You know, I was a, a local news reporter. Remember Where? Local Days? Of course. My very first job was in West Virginia, Bluefield, West Virginia. Mine was Redding, California. Oh, good, great, so we can relate. Yes? Okay, so yeah. I was a one-man band, which is popular again. They called them MMJs now. Right. But I, I shot my yeah. camera, I edited my video. I yeah. did it all on my own. All on in, deadline. A, all on deadline right. in West Virginia. And I was going to be, I mean, I had it in my mind. I was gonna be Katie Couric. Then I was going to be Oprah. And then that was it. I was going to be a star. And right. all, it didn't work out that way. Well. I mean, I didn't do too bad. <laughs> I didn't do, I mean, but, you know. Right. Not so, Oprah. So which, was it ABC, NBC? What was it? It was uh, W-O-A-Y, and it was an ABC affiliate. Yeah. Yes. I was K-R-C-R television. Okay. An ABC affiliate. How much you make an hour? Six. Oh, this is a great story. Okay. <laughs> so I, start, I got started in 1994. When okay. I got started. And I got six... 50 an hour. Look at you. Okay. Okay. Well, hold on a second. So three months into my tenure mm. at KRC, our television, Spirit of the North State, which was the, uh, was the I guess, the logo or the, the slogan of the station, mm -hmm. um, I get called into the office by my news director, uh -huh. a fellow named Cal Hunter. Uh -huh. okay? And he sl slid across the table a folded up piece of paper with a staple at the top and said, go on and open it. And I'm like, oh my God, I have no idea what this is gonna be. So I, sure enough, I'm nervous, cause I'm like, why is he calling me in? I open up the top uh -huh. so as not to disturb the staple. I open it up and it said, congratulations, your probation period is over. I had no idea I was on a probation period. <laughs> First of all. <laughs> and I now had a raise and he filled in one blank with 650 to 670. Whoa. An hour. Whoa. 20 cents an hour. Raise. Whoa, good for, yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Look at you. What was your first? What was your starting? Oh style? well, I, I I really want to tell you that you were making more than me, and I started a little later in life than you did. But I remember every week my check would be somewhere every two weeks. Sorry, yes, would be somewhere in between three seventy five and four fifty, three hundred and seventy five dollars and four hundred and fifty dollars. And whenever I did a great job, my my boss was like, "We're going to give you an extra little bonus," and he'd give me twenty five extra dollars for that. Look at that. Oh, yeah, he was like, hey, "You take this here, Carrie, and you." Don't spend it everywhere. So how did ESPN <laughs> find you? Um, I then, you know, so I went through the local news rankings. Uh, my right. last job was in Atlanta where I got fired and rehired for maybe cursing on air. I said mother sucker because, you know, that's a very urban thing to say. But they thought I said the F-bomb. Okay. Yeah, and they were mad at me. So they fired you and then you I got, well, I got my job back because there was no actual audio of me cursing. And then so okay. I think I was just a pain in the ass. <laughs> <with you. laughs> You were a mother sucker. I was a mother sucker. <laughs> okay. And so they were like, look at this woman. Okay. And then so I left there and then I ended up working at the Tennis Channel, which is a right. you know single sport network. And yep. then from there, I had this great idea. I was like, I should go work at ESPN. Yes. And then that happened. However, here's the story and you can relate to this. Right. I, I didn't know anybody there. So we had this great idea to fly out to Bristol, Connecticut, and I was going to knock on doors. And I had a meeting with a guy who was really nice, and he said, I really want to hang out with you. His name was Jerry Madelon. I know Jerry. You know a Jerry. Of course, G-Matt. Yeah. Hi. So G-Matt meets with me for five minutes. He forgets that I flew all the way from L.A. And he goes, oh, my God, we can't send you on your way. Let me just gather up some meetings for you. And he gathered up some folks for me to talk to. No and kidding. Then, and then, you know, six months later, a year later, rather, if I'm yes. being honest, they were like, there's this show called First Take. Do you want to host it? And I was like, what show? I was like, the show with the guys? And then I was like, well, what, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. What do you, I don't understand. Yes. And then, because uh, it was just confusing to me, they had a host. There yes. was Dana and there was Jay. Yes. And I was like, oh, okay, well, sure, I'll come and audition. I, I go to audition. And you know when you knock it out the park. Yes. I killed it. If I do say so myself. How did you know you killed it? Well, because they weren't talking. But that was the that was the key. You, <laughs> they weren't you mean talking. Stephen Stephen A and Skip. They did, were just. Did they do it with you? Yes, they, okay. they were doing it with me. But they and and you know Skip was very honest. He was like, "There's no real way to do what we do because it's just magical and it's just on TV." <laughs> well, he's also throwing crap against the wall just in case it's 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 I mean, anything to do with LeBron. I mean, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so then he goes, mm -hmm. "We try to do the show." Right. Or we do a fake version of the show. Right. And they were just so pleasant and polite. They weren't arguing. And I was like, these gentlemen, good grief. Okay. <laughs> is... That was your first, first take. Yeah, I was saying. like, okay. And then I left and I was like, oh, I did great. And then, you know, they hired me 
And then I was like, welcome, kid. I was a rook. It was hard luck. Sure. Yeah. So I went the other way. Oh, okay. I went from ESPN to a one sport network. Which is great. You know, and and I remember I did knock it out of the park with my sports center audition. And the reason why I did uh -huh. is I stayed in the Radisson Hotel uh -huh. across the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You remember you remember that? Yeah, that, that, that lovely place. That one season um, <laughs> across the street from from ESPN. And I stayed up uh, all night because A, I couldn't sleep. B, anytime somebody went to the bathroom in the room above me, I heard them. And C, uh, I, I was watching Sports Center with Dan, Patrick, and Keith Olbermann. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you know what? Just to get myself into the audition for the next day, I'm gonna watch them yeah. and it's get inspired and fired up. Sure enough, the next day, my audition for for Sports Center used the same tapes no. to date, just to, to date myself. The same tapes and same highlights from the night before. So I had no idea I was actually legitimately studying for my audition the night before. Yeah. So I was not nervous. I knew every, I, I was doing things in my own head, saying if I was doing this highlight, I'd say this. Oh wow. So I got it done, and you and, killed you know, it. And then I was hired, and I was on Sports Center in 1996. And then uh, a couple months later, I was paired up with a, a good friend and ah. a, a colleague of, of mine and yeah. somebody who I know you know as well, who um, carried champion here on The Rich Eisen Show. I'm going to turn a little bit here. It was four years ago today that Stu passed. Yeah. Stuart Scott, yep. who I, I did more TV with than anybody mm -hmm. at, at ESPN. Uh, I get emotional. I know. I'm, I know you're tearing up. I do too. Yeah. You know, I so... What what is your your recollections of of Stu? Of so Stuart? when I first started working there, and everyone has this story, so I'll try not to I'll try to keep my emotions in check. Oh, good. I mean, he was really special. So when I first started working there, I had to work on that show first take. Right? It was really it was a tough show, and I didn't really know, you know, I didn't know what I was getting myself That's into. That's a deep pool that you were thrown into. I was, and they were like, figure it out. And so a lot of people would just kind of ignore the toughness of it and that place is a lonely place if you're not from there you know and I I'm a, I'm a kid from Los Angeles and I and I'm living in Bristol Connecticut and I'm figuring it all out and and I and I, I figured it out sink or swim I, fi I figured it out but there were days where I was just you know I wasn't feeling it and I never I never really complained because no one cares um, but one day I had a really tough day on air and I remember thinking to myself okay I don't know how long I can stay here I don't know if I can do this this is tough this is this is stretching me beyond my skill set um, and I remember doing a commercial break, and I just thought I was saying it to myself. I, I lean over, and I just grab my phone, because you check your cell phone as we do, mm -hmm. this ADD. So I check my cell phone, and there is a message from the one and only. Stu. And he was like, while you're dealing with all of this, stay elegant and classy and above it all. You're doing great, kid. I almost lost it on air, but is that not him? Come on. Come on, I, right? Um, is that um, not who he is? And then... When we knew he was really, really sick, when we say we, because everyone knows, right. we all had this uh, conversation one time, and it was when Jamel and Michael were working, and we were sitting at our local bar there in Bristol, and we were just kind of, you know, we kind of knew it was coming, and we all wanted to talk about how great he was, and then we would all, we all put out our phones, because if he sent you a message, you would save it, and each one of us had a very special, personalized message from him. He told Jamel, you're the only one that does that do that can do what you do. Don't ever forget that. You are the best. He told Michael, I'm so proud of you. I love watching. I mean, they, we were reading these messages from yeah. this man. And he didn't just do it for me and for Jamel and for Michael. He did it for Cassie Hubbard. He did it for Kevin. Agon he did it for everybody. He was so he generous and so caring about this, about us, this group of of talent and he knew he knew what we were going through but he didn't want to get into the minutia of it all he was just like keep your head up yeah because he I, I think that's a great way to put it carry champion here on the rich eisen show because the minutia the reason why i think he probably didn't want to get into it with you is yeah. because that's you can get caught up in all that and stuff that's not the point no yeah the point is to be yourself yep that's the point. And that's what he was saying to every single one of us, stay yourself. That's right. Because he, the number of times that he was told about the minutia, yeah. he just discarded it. Uh -huh. And he was himself. I, I lost track of that. And it was inspirational to me too, um, knowing how much yeah. he was going through. And yeah. the thing that I cannot believe yeah. are the number of Stuart Scott I don't want to use the word imitators because I imitate a bunch of people on, yeah. on TV too yeah, from, yeah. from when I grew up Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But people who he has clearly inspired, and now you don't bat an eyelash 
when somebody's dropping some form of hip hop lyric during a sports cast or does something completely uh, personal that has nothing to do with pop culture sure. uh, racially. Sure. It's just themselves. Being he would myself. put it out there. Yeah, he, he was um, amazing. He was often like that. he was like the definition of authenticity, and it was he made me comfortable being myself on air there. Right. Because that's the only way you're going to be able to truly um, affect people and connect with people and be personal. And and uh, some people don't believe in that, and I believe in that wholeheartedly. And he encouraged everybody to do that. Yeah, my wife and I looked at each other. We're like, can't believe it's been four years. It's been a, yeah. I, well, because you know, yeah. I met my wife in in Bristol. Oh, did you? Yes, I did. Okay. You know, she... well, you know all about again. You know about what your social life could be up there. And, it's in a, a good small time. Community. Okay. It's a party. Well, no. What do you mean? I met. That... You know, so no? I, I met her up there, yeah. and she just wanted to be friends. Uh huh. And Stuart would always be <laughs> pushing the two of us together. together to hang out. Oh yeah. I can see that. Oh yeah. Yeah. He was playing matchmaker, yeah. and he was saying, you know, hang in there to me, and he's <laughs> telling her, you know, hey, he's not so bad, and. You know, and Stu would always be just, you know, and I just seeing the way he is with his, he was with his daughters, mm-hmm. you know, it inspires me with my little five year old. I mean, not to get too deep here, obviously, even though we are. Yeah. I just it's it yeah. you know, there's not many people who obviously know him so yeah. well, uh, you, these days. And so you had the what I think for so many people is the invaluable times. You got to be on air with that that legend. Um and I would have killed to do that. I would have loved to have a show with Stuart. I would have loved it. Carrie Champion here on the Rich Eisen Show. Well, I, you know, it's not a bad then, if you will, consolation prize to have a show with Dwayne Johnson. I mean, I can't, he's, <laughs> he does this. What does he do again? Yeah, I know. He's kind of, you know, what, I, what one would call a uh, inter- in, in, international juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, the Titan Games, uh, yeah. which began last night on NBC. What is it like to be on the set with, with Dwayne Johnson this day and age here now? I remember everyone prior to actually starting the show, um, we. I I was, you know how we do the auditions. This is our business, right? This anybody who can relate TV goes in for an audition, and you you talk to the producers of the show. Mm -hmm. Um, And from what I could tell, what I could gleam, the show was about just sweat equity, just about working hard. Everything I read about him, everything I've seen him do, and you can tell he's a hard worker because he's never not working, as you know, but (laughs) (laughs) never not working. But I respected that, and and the idea to me when I walked in, they said, "Well, what do you think the show is about?" And I said, "I think it's just." It's about people like us who just really want to work hard. They may have had a dream deferred. They may have had uh, a missed opportunity on any level, whether they played sports in college or high school, or maybe they thought one day they'd be uh, a pro at whatever it may be, and mm-hmm. it didn't turn out that way. But they used uh, their physical grind to build them up and, and figure it out. And I I was, I was admire that because that's all I know, right? I, especially in this business, you have to – work really hard. You can't get by on looks. You can't get by on just pretending as if you know what you're doing. You have to put in that work. And I was I was excited about doing a show like that. But most importantly, you know, everyone knows his story. He had seven bucks in his pocket. He came here and I think he has a little more than seven dollars in his pocket now. You know what I mean? I asked him for five. At any given time. <laughs> I was like, can I get five dollars of the seven dollars? Uh, no. And uh, working with him was just that. He never stopped. He had energy nonstop, pleasant. Uh, I was told everyone had to be nice so i put a sometimes i can get cranky rich <laughs> <laughs> especially at three in the morning and sometimes huh? right. i can be cranky yeah. <laughs> and but you, right. he kept everyone having a great attitude and then obviously uh lee McHugh, I mean, you know him right? yeah and uh golden boy they were great to be around because they were just beyond professional it was such a great group of people but even better it's really about these stories these stories are so inspirational and people say oh so why is this show different from the other shows the other competition shows yes well, because it's the stories the stories move you you tune in every single week and you're like i'm rooting for that you're already rooting for somebody sure. you're like i like that person i love what she's went through i love what he went through um, and it was just special. I, you could feel it on the set because it's overwhelming. It gave me anxiety watching them compete. Yeah, plus the the competitions are are created by Dwayne Johnson. So based these on are the his, ones, his right. workout. Based on some of my workouts too. Is that right? Which yeah. one? Which one? Uh, based there, on your workout? There's this one where you're lifting. Like when I as I drink my wine. Yes. There, <laughs> there is this one. I'm kidding. There's not. But. Is it a Cabernet situation? Is <laughs> I, it, love, you, love, oh, yeah. I love a red. A big boom in red. I love oh, a Pinot. Yes. You know. Okay. I love wine. Me too. Okay, good. What kind? Me too. A big booming Cabernet, but really a Brunello is my favorite. Is That's that my go-to. Okay, so what? Okay, what is the? Uh, give me. I used to love Naomi, but it was really sweet. What was your favorite? 
Which, when you say you have, was, you're using the past okay, tense. Okay, I'm sorry. Currently, I mean, like I'm, if I if I I'm went drunk to your... from last night, as a matter of fact. <laughs> um, so you mean in terms of a Give red me, wine? Yeah, that you drink. Your consistent oh, go-to. Oh gosh, the consistent go-to that I'm doing right now. Can I, Brockman? Will I come across as? What will I come across as if I'm very specific? Highfalutin. Here? Highfalutin. A little bit. A little bit. That's okay. Okay. You know, uh, a, I'm, I'm. You work hard. You can be fancy. Um, there's a something called Tenuta Rosa right now. <laughs> that is a no. Montepulciano wine. God bless you. By the way. <laughs> okay, and then that Fact. is available at Trader Joe's. It is available. It's available. <laughs> it's available. It's definitely available. Um, before I let you go, Carrie okay. Champion, we have a, a game here on the Rich Eisen Show called Start Bench Cut. Okay. Where we give you we give you it's not on the Titan Games. It's from and it's it's from the mind of of our rocks mm -hmm. okay and uh you have to start one bench one cut one mm -hmm. okay so you're given three choices you must start bench cut okay. let's do it with carry champion it's time start start now bench Just sit down and be quiet or cut Get up. okay here we go first one up for uh carry champion ucla bruin in the house the ucla head coach you would want hired you've got to have basketball okay you've got to you've got to start one bench one cut one uh, Earl Watson, who was publicly endorsed by Lonzo Ball the other mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred Hoiberg, who, as we all know, did very well at Iowa State before we all know what happened with the Bulls. Mm -hmm. And current Arizona State head coach Bobby Hurley is a, a hot head coach. Ooh. So you'd have to start one, bench one, cut one, carry champion. Okay, I, I'd start Earl. Okay, you start okay. Earl. Okay, I'd bench Hurley. Okay. And I'd cut Hoiberg. What happened? Did the mayor's out? Uh, you, you listen, I... I, I don't I don't know if he has it. And I look what do I know? I'm I'm so when I speak about the Bruins, I'm speaking completely out of sheer emotion that's and what why I we're think. Asking you these yeah, questions. and that's what and I, what I think is that there's a there's a way that you need to connect with these kids, especially these Hollywood kids. And what I say about that is that a lot of people who come to UCLA, they have a lot of star influence or they're surrounded by stars. Yes. Earl can handle that. He's been there. He played look, he played there. God, I mean, come on. Okay. I figure and he's a friend of mine. Okay, there we go, too. I like it. Full disclosure. All right, next one. Start, bench, cut. Your favorite kind of ball. Uh -huh. uh, tennis, since you're on the tennis channel. Okay. Basket. Oh. Uh, and then put it up right there on the screen. LeVar. Ooh. Ooh. There you go. Tennis, I, basket, okay. LeVar. Let me Start, you, bench, cut. I am definitely starting basket because it is basketball is my favorite sport. Okay. Tennis, I will bench it, and I'm going to have to cut you, LeVar. I'm going to have to cut you. <laughs> I am, in more ways than one. I'm gonna have to cut you. Ouch! Oh, oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, I don't. I don't promote violence. No. But I would if I had to. Okay. <laughs> We're just seeing what it's like on the set of the Titan Games at three in the morning, right there. Okay. Next up. Next up. The because uh, I know we, we know you're a, a Laker fan. Oh my gosh. You work across the street from Staples every day. Yes. What a great What a great office you have. Uh -huh. On Sports Center. Uh, <laughs> most expendable and best Lakers trade asset. Lonzo. Brandon Ingram, Kyle Kuzma, start bench cut, carry champion. This is gonna get you know. Can I tell you something? No mm -hmm. matter what I say here, mm -hmm. uh, the feedback is I'm gonna. I, I mean, I'm gonna get it in every aspect. This is this, these are these are n not easy questions for a reason. They're okay. gonna get. By the way, they get increasingly more difficult. They're as gonna well. at me. They're gonna let me have it. At you, listen. At carry champion. Yeah. Like, tell me. <laughs> tell me how you feel. I don't care. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start Kyle. I'm going to bench Lonzo. Whoa, and I'm cutting Ingram. Yeah. Can I? We just had this conversation today about okay. Brandon. It's been three years. I need some development. What, who's responsible for that? I don't know. I guess uh, there's not everyone's been around long enough to start pointing fingers on that. Listen, yet, I think. but LeBron says he's a superstar. LeBron goes, guess what? He's a, he goes, Carrie, I think he's a superstar. I said, do you? And then I same thing. Magic says the same thing. He's a superstar. I, I'm doing these interviews with him, and they're yeah. telling me this kid's a superstar. Yeah, because they want to trade him. <laughs> Come on, this is not your first rodeo, Come on, Carrie. Come on, Carrie. All right, Anthony Davis, we'll see you in a minute. All right, last one. Last one for uh, for Carrie Champion. Start bench cut. Yeah. Best on-air co-host. Uh-oh. Dwayne Johnson. Uh-oh. Stephen A. Oh, Smith. Oh, God. Goodbye. Skip Bayless. You guys, I'm not doing this. I am not. Dwayne Johnson, Stephen A., Skip Bayless. Start bench cut, Carrie. <laughs> I'm going to cut myself. I'm going to no, answer that question. That is not no, no, no. an acceptable response. Dwayne Johnson, Stephen A. Smith, Skip Bayless, start bench cut. Woo! You know, all I have to say is you guys are not fair. My kneecaps <laughs> are sweaty. Um, wow. There's water to your left. <laughs> Just. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to. 
I'm going to start DJ. Of course, obviously. It's your, yes, yes. Obviously, come I mean, on. You're working gonna, your way through it. You're almost come on. home. You're almost home. I am going to bench Stephen A. Yes. And I'm going to cut Skip. See ya. <laughs> Correct answer. <laughs> it looks like Family Feud. Good yeah, answer. Yeah, good, yeah, answer. Yeah, good answer. Yeah, yeah. Good answer. <laughs> answer. Oh, that is not fair. You made it. You made it. Uh, the Titan Games on NBC Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Carrie Champion, I hope yes. this is the first of many times. You I hope so, too. Here. Check it out, folks, please. At 8 Eastern Time on Thursday nights. So that's Carrie Champion, at Carrie Champion, so at her on Twitter <laughs> here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.